Hello, welcome to How to Play Help Your Neighbor, a game for two to six players. Now, normally I don't cover gambling games, mostly because they're not really games, but just easy to see statistical probabilities. And while there are some other activities that can be used to determine and assign chores or jobs or work that nobody wants to volunteer for, and sometimes you have to give a negative consequence award, but what about the times there's positive awards? What if we can do a charity, but the person who would be receiving the charity would be reluctant to take that charity? What if they don't want to make it appear that we're doing this, but rather we're just redistributing some wealth to somebody who is in severe need of it? Now, plenty of charities have been authorized to use bingo, but bingo is kind of one of those games that seems unfair because you could just buy more tickets so now we're just going to do a way of doing that we're going to need six different players basically six different charities we will roll three dice each dice representing a player so in this case player five and player four both have to contribute chips player five contributes two chips player four contributes one chip the game will keep going until one charity has ran out of chips that charity will receive the charitable aid from each player. Thus, we have compensated a charity by playing a game and making it seem like we had some sort of impact in the outcome of the game without really having to do much. And it's kind of a fun activity. You roll dice, you put chips in, you see who wins. And it's a drawn out way of generating a random number. But the other thing we do is we don't necessarily contribute all the chips. Sometimes the game can end earlier and less chips get distributed, less money gets donated to the winner. So yes, this is a gambler, but it can be used in a different way, in a different form. So it's something to consider with games like this, with activities like this. While they don't have much value as games, they do have a great value with other applications of their use. So something to consider, something to think about, when thinking about games that are otherwise boring. What can we do with them to make them better? And this is the best use I found for this game, Help Your Neighbor. Which I found in a little dice book pamphlet that I bought that came with five dice that I bought. So I definitely recommend uh, attempting it. It's good for large groups to keep them entertained. If you want to see who uh, pays the check and who leaves the tip, this is a great way of doing it. Uh, because then you could leave a better tip amount based on how well the game went. Or you could le less of a tip amount based on how the game went. All kinds of fun little th activities to do with this game. It's up to you to determine what the best and most appropriate course of action is, of course. But pretty much everybody takes their roll of the dice, and all the players abide by the dice's results, and you just keep going until somebody is out of chips. And that's pretty much help your neighbor. It looks like we're getting pretty close. We're back to player one who's going to roll. And player five has managed to get rid of all their chips. Their charity wins the game. So if you actually want to play something like this in public, come to card game meetups, post your city, post what games you know, put what games you want to know and where you want to play. Do check out the links. We have a link to a Discord server where we talk about card games and one that where we talk about nothing but solitaire games all day. And I want to thank our musician, Michael Allen Harrison, for uh, his cover of Get Together. Do check out his channel. He's got a lot of great music on there. Very talented musician. So do check it out and do subscribe if you find his music entertaining. And I'll see you next video.